Good morning, everyone. I, Hi, everyone. <laughs> ah, Kristen, you already know who she is. So she's here with me today. And we're going to do another interview. She's got a wonderful success story for you today. And Kristen, just for people that don't know you, can you say, obviously, where you are in the world so they know, and then we can start talking about your story? Mm -hmm. um, I'm from Germany. Cool. So we all know where that is in Europe and I'm in London. So Kristen has um, kindly said she would come and talk to us. She's had a wonderful success story. So Kristen, I'm just going to hand it over to you. You go ahead and tell us what's happening. Um, yeah, I recently manifested my specific person and I'm in a committed relationship now. <laughs> Lovely, lovely. So can you tell us what happened? I mean, you and I have done a couple of interviews already. What's happened yeah. since then? Um, I think I'm just going to talk a bit about my background because uh, I've got a lot of emails and I think it's a bit confusing. Yeah. This whole thing with my ex and then with that other person and now with that new person. So um, I want to talk a bit about my background. Yes. So I started this whole self-love journey I think it was in 2016 I think um with that with one specific ex basically um yeah the relationship failed because again I was seeking outside love I was very very needy and I didn't have my own self-love going on at all so I was really good at attracting this guy and the relationship lasted for I think two months or something like that and then um everything started to go downhill because I was really demanding it it was crazy and then basically we broke up and um I knew about the mechanics in your channel and what I did is like I really took your advice from the videos and I really really worked on it so I did a lot of self-love meditations did all these kind of things and manifested him back <laughs> um but then I realized quickly that this guy isn't necessarily what I want because you have to see I was I'm still very young and at that time I was about 18 years old or something yeah and this guy was he's not a bad person at all and I'm not saying that it's just he didn't fit to me personally because he was yeah he was also very young and mm. yeah I think guys in that age are a bit yeah basically he wasn't really fitting to me with his lifestyle like he was going yep. out a lot and he was quite negative and I just didn't want him anymore so and then I met my ex like the ex I talked in the video mm -hmm. in the interviews we did and um yeah the details are in that interview I think um those of the viewers who are interested can watch that other interview because it, I yeah. think it doesn't make sense if I repeat it all over again yeah in yeah that interview, I basically told everything I did and basically, it happened the same thing again. I didn't really, I, I worked on myself, love, but it wasn't really stable. And I basically attracted another breakup with that other ex and had to do all the self love work. And we got back together. But again, um, he was also not someone that really fits to me. And it took a lot of like internal work to figure out who like fits to me and who doesn't. Because yeah. when you're young, like at least I didn't really pay, I didn't pay attention to what kind of person fits to me. I think that's also important to consider. Yeah. I mean, we can fall in love with people who don't fit to us, but Ooh. for me, positivity is really important. So this guy also doesn't fit to me at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So basically he broke up with me again, basically last year in May, like that's what happened um, on the timeline. Uh, for the same reason he broke up with me the first time and it was really the same thing again I really I didn't have like a stable foundation of self-love and he felt that and wanted to leave <laughs> yeah yeah and isn't that great that you can see that yeah instead of saying oh he did this and he did that and he wasn't good to me and he didn't give enough which a lot of people do in that situation you're going hang on a minute my self-love wasn't stable and that's why he broke up with me. I just love that you can take full responsibility for that and just accept it. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Like it was really painful when he broke up with me the second time. And it was interesting because he said the exact same things he said the first time. Basically he was saying that 
it was interesting because he claimed that I wasn't giving enough. And in, uh, it was really true because I was still in this place of I want him to do everything for me, but I'm not giving anything in return. Yeah. And it's a burden, really. I was really also emotionally burdening him. And it wasn't really his fault because... All right. <laughs> I hope this works now. Um, anyways, he broke up with me in May last year and, and it was painful, of course, but I saw, you know, it was really, again, I, I mean, I was working on myself. It's not that I wasn't doing anything, but it takes time. It really takes time. And I still wanted to get love all of the time and wasn't really able to have it internally. That's why he broke up again. Mm. Um, but and in June, I met my new person. It wasn't planned or anything. Like, we met in a mutual law of attraction group. And he texted me at one point last year in June. And, yeah, that's when I started, yeah, getting kind of attracted to him. Like, it wasn't planned or anything. Yeah. And I also didn't plan to move on from my ex because I was all of the time concerned with feeling good and having my own self-love. But I wasn't trying to move on at that point but it just happened kind yeah. of naturally like it just happens that I met someone new and yeah and you already had the um common interests you were both yeah it was amazing mm. yeah. yeah so yeah I can just tell for everyone on your channel who's into law of attraction and who doesn't have someone specific in mind it's really fun to have someone or attract someone who also is into law of attraction because for me it's a big big part of my life and yeah. I'm honestly I'm honest I think it wouldn't really work with someone who's for example I don't know religious or something or who has strong problems with law of attraction I think it wouldn't work <laughs> because law of attraction is a big part of my life and yeah. Um, so yeah it's really fun that uh, my person also is into law of attraction and also does uh, self-love and all this internal work on him, mm. on him. Now, you aren't in the same country with him. You're in different countries, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. we are. Like, he's in the UK and I'm in Germany. And that yeah. was, like, the whole... Like, I've never attracted someone I haven't been with. Like, I yeah. attracted, like, two exes back. But it was a challenge for me because I... Yeah, it was a challenge because I knew it does work, but I had no idea how I can do this. How is this going to work? I mean, he's in the United Kingdom. At that point, we have never met physically. Yeah. yeah. And I felt a bit stupid at first, too, because I was like, okay, I don't really know this guy. Yeah. And I felt a bit childish, but I really felt, I mean, you can really feel it even through texting. You can sense the vibe of someone. Yeah. And I felt that he's like really secure and self-loving. And that's why I was attracted to him. Like I didn't really, I mean, I knew how he looks, but that didn't matter to me. Mm. But it was just really his sense of self-love and positivity. Like I was really attracted to that. Yeah, that's lovely. And you were able to see him physically not long ago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So basically what I did in order to yeah attract him, it, it was really nothing crazy. Like the only thing I did was solidly working on my self-love because it is like, I can't, can't say it often enough, but it is the most important thing. Like it doesn't work any other way because yeah. when you don't have the foundation, you repel people. It doesn't matter if yep. it's friends or it just repels everyone. Yeah. And it's, it's and it also doesn't matter if the person lives in another country. Yeah. They still pick up on your vibes. Yeah. And yeah, I think it's really self-love. Yeah. I, I still do that. It's the most yeah. important thing. <laughs> I, I agree. I, I, you know, I just, I wish they'd teach that at school. Imagine if mm -hmm. they taught self-love at school, how many kids would not be going out looking for other people to love them as they get older or even at school, because we know this comes up at school where you feel like you don't have friends or you feel like you're being bullied or you feel like, like if you were taught self-love, that would change your whole school experience with other yeah. kids. And then that therefore, because what happens at school, 
it happens again to you and as an adult because you carry all that stuff with you into your 20s into your 30s and on and on it goes if you don't deal with it so yeah i just think we you know but at least now with the internet we can find out about self love we can practice it and i mean louise hay she i was 17 when i first heard her my mum was listening to her on the old cassette tapes when i was mm -hmm. 17 and I think, you know, I used to go, oh, what is this? You know, I was just thinking this is, what is my mum listening to, you know? But years later, I saw how important it was and, and it's, you know, it's been the biggest change in my life too is, is learning. Well, you learn about self-love usually when relationships are hard and you, mm -hmm. go, and you go, what's going on? I don't understand why mm -hmm. this isn't working. And then it takes you on a journey to learning about what you're doing wrong, which is I'm trying to get love from other people and they, they don't want that job. They want someone that comes to them with self-love and has something to give, not trying to get. So it's like a lesson we all have to learn at some point. No one gets away with it. You, 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 you either, even if you don't learn about it, then you start drinking, smoking, overeating whatever it is that you do to to fix it's like you think that that stuff's going to fix that unloved feeling and it doesn't as we know but yeah it it's a it's an amazing journey it really is an amazing journey and it goes on and on like i think you know still every day self love is really important to me and you know it started off when I was your age. So it just, it keeps going. It keeps going. It keeps going. It's one of the best things I've ever learned ever, ever, ever. So I'm really proud of you. Well done. Well done. Yeah. I think it's so good. And I'm, what I'll do is I'll put the other interviews that we've done down below. So people, if they are new to the channel, they can go back and look at your other things that we've discussed in the other interviews we've done. Because it's not a straight line, is it? Like you had one ex, then it turned into something else with somebody else. And now you've gone, you know, it's evolved over time. And you've attracted someone that's more like you, more into what you like and all of that, which is so wonderful. It really is. And It is really wonderful. Yeah. You can talk the same language. It was really funny because I thought I never liked the list because I know some people do like lists of what they want in a partner and yeah. manifest that. And I was thinking a week ago, like, it's interesting because he really has all the qualities I, I like and uh, it's really amazing. For example, he is very self-secure. He's intellectual. He is <clears throat> very, yeah. very secure. He's yeah. a love attraction. Yeah. He even has like um, physical qualities I like, even though I wasn't focusing on that at all. Yes. That's not really important to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I saw like, I don't know if you know the book, it's, it's a book by Jack Canfield. I think it's called, I don't know, The Key to Living the Law of Attraction, I think. Okay. And a year ago, like really exactly a year ago, um, I was writing a list in there because it is a book where they have like also written pages where you can... Uh, write a list of what you want and what you don't want so you get clear on what you want and then I accidentally saw that I was writing in there and it was funny because I wrote things down like um, we have daily contact and there's harmony and we don't fight like on the other hand of what I don't want and that he's intellectual that we have the same views and all these kind of things and that manifest that even though I was completely letting go of that, like yeah. I wasn't trying to attract someone new. I really wasn't like that just happened. Yeah. And I think it's really because I was really letting go of this yeah. kind of list. And generally like um, I learned that from a very young age that this relate that generally relationships won't make me any happier than I already am. Yeah. Because I've always had it like easy in my childhood or like in my teen years to attract uh, boys because yeah. I um, I grew up uh, with really good experiences around men. For example, my father and my mom, they are married. They are yeah. I think, well, 40 years together now and they are still a couple and they like yeah. my father never looked for another woman. Yeah. My father never cheated. Yeah. Also, my uncles never cheated. 
And yeah. I really grew up seeing that there's loyalty, that there's faithfulness, and that relationships last and that men are good. Because isn't that my dad, wonderful? Yeah, my dad, I mean, he isn't like super affectionate, but he's really loyal and I can trust him. Like I, I really grew up in these circumstances. Yeah. And um, when I was bullied as a kid, like I got a lot of um, comfort from also from guys, like from my father and um, other boys who stood up for me. So <laughs> I really grew up with, good beliefs about men and that's why yeah. I had it always very easy yeah. to attract then relationships when I was like 14, 15 years old. Yeah. And at that time I really like I really consciously used that in order to feel more secure because when I was bullied I lost all of my friends and it was really, really tough for me. And yeah. when I had new friends I I was really consciously thinking, okay, the next step is now to have a boyfriend that's another source of security for me. Yeah, And I thought, well, this is going to get me very much security. And then I realized it's not like I, I, I saw it and it didn't make me feel any better. Yeah. Um, it didn't make me, it really didn't make a difference. Even though I was treated well, even mm. though I had someone who was always there for me, I still had the same feeling inside. And that's why I learned very early that it's not really making me and feel any better. Mm. And I think so many women think, that having a relationship will magically transform mm. their lives and yeah. suddenly will make them feel really good and secure and it, it's not working. Mm. At least for me, it, it, it's not working. Yeah, yeah. And it I is. can honestly say I have now the relationship I want and of course it's nice. I'm not saying it's not nice or something, but it doesn't really... I mean, I felt really good before and it only adds up but it doesn't make yeah. me more secure. Yeah. That's true. That's true. It's, um, you know, I'm not sure if it was you and, and I, when we were communicating via email, I think it was you that said something about, you know, I can still, I can see that I'm getting everything that I want, but I st it still doesn't change the fact that I'm not feeling loved inside. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that, that was such a, um, a great way to explain it because people think if I get the relationship, that unloved feel feeling is going to go away. No, and it doesn't. You you end up feeling like, oh, I don't deserve this, or you take it for granted, or no matter what the person says, you don't believe them, or it doesn't hit if you are not feeling it inside. And then people often lose relationships, good relationships, because they t they don't take in and and feel the love from the other person they go oh that's not true or they're not they don't really mean it or they're going to go away anyway and they do all this stuff and they won't let the love in no no so, yeah it's really it's really true because yeah. i think it even gets more tricky when you have a relationship and oh. don't feel loved inside because at least that's happening for me and, and it still happens at times that i get panicky that i feel like oh i'm not getting enough and then i feel even more it's yeah, really pain like it's really an internal yeah oh. it is internal it is and um but the thing is at least when it's there you can go okay hang on a minute i'm receiving love from someone but i'm not feeling loved about my own self and you can see that and you go okay i've got to actually work on my self-love mm -hmm. yes for the relationship to continue so that i'm a good partner but also that i do it for me I do it yeah, for because you. it really like I can say um, I've always I get a lot of love from my family. Like my parents, like I live at home. Yeah, and they're always there for me. They do everything for me, and they always ask how I feel every day. Nice. Like, and I get this love, and also from my person, he's really loving and caring. And I still at times feel like I just don't feel it because yeah. I don't have it internally. Yeah. I mean, it's really it's a journey. It is. So Kristen, because in your case, because your family situation is actually really good and really loving and the men have been wonderful in your life, what do you think, where do you think the unloved came from? Was it from school? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, it's really, I, like some people don't really see it as something heavy, but for me it was like the most painful thing I ever experienced. Yeah. Because, um, 
when I had puberty, or rather, I, as a kid, I was always very, very confident. I always had a lot of friends, and I was really, really confident because I grew up in good circumstances. I was really, really confident and felt good. Yeah. And then I had puberty, I think around, I was around 12 years old, and suddenly, like, it dropped. Like, I felt yeah. like from one day to the other, I, got, I went from very confident to depressed, and I, I was in a really, really dark place. I just yeah. felt really insecure bad about myself about everything basically yeah. I was in a really dark place I don't know I think was, it, was it comparing yourself to other people was it the, the lack of confidence was it in comparison or what what was it that you think changed what was happening in your head it's a good question I have no idea yeah. I, I really had a lot of really dark thoughts yeah I don't know where it came from I think it was maybe like puberty hormones maybe hormonal yeah yeah the change you're going through a big change from yeah around 12 years old sometimes it's a bit later for people but yeah it is a big change and you you go through um kind of phase where you know you start your body's changing some people get skin problems you know, some people, your friends are, are developing faster than you. You feel like you're being left behind or you're developing quicker and you feel like what's going on with me, everybody still looks like that. So whichever end you're on, you feel like you don't want to be different. You want to be the same as everybody at that age. Yeah. Mm. And well, my problem thing, was... Yeah, go uh, ahead. Um, it was funny because I always blamed the circumstances for me feeling this way, but it was actually the other way around. Yeah. Like I felt at that time, I felt unloved. I felt extremely insecure at that time. I, I yeah. noticed that I was negative, but I felt like I was right kind of, and my friends were positive and they started to, yeah, it's, it's just natural. Like when you have someone who's suddenly very negative, you just want to get away from that. Yeah. And that yeah. happened, but I, at that time, I didn't know what was going on, but I yeah. felt that they were kind of um, distancing themselves from me yeah. and I had this big fear that they will leave me. And it happened. Like, and it happened. It happened. Yeah. I but think was, one of the, the best ways for people to leave you is be really negative for a long period of time. Everybody will go away. <laughs> but I didn't. I, I really, it took a lot of introspection. Like it really took like until the last months until I really uncovered this. Like I've always yeah. thought that this happened and then I felt in love, but it was the other way around. I felt depressed and unloved and insecure and had this fear. And then it happened. Like it was really a self-fulfilling prophecy. It is. Yeah, it is. And what's good is you can look back now and you can see what happened while you're in the middle of it. You've got no idea what's going on. Um, it's such a challenging time that time because you're, you're going through such a change, going from being a child to an adult. Um, and also mentally, you're still like a child in your head. Even though your body's changing, your head still hasn't caught up No, in a lot of cases. So, yeah, it is. It's, it is a difficult time. It is a difficult time. And, you know, for a lot of people, not for everyone. Some people are popular and feel happy and they make the transition. And, you know, that's how it was for them. But... You know, we all have areas where everybody has an area where they struggle. You know, it's, it's no one I have ever met has got the whole thing perfect for their whole life. It just doesn't seem to happen. You know, we all have challenges, whether it's around money, relationships, job, health, or issues with family, whatever it is, you know, there's always something that uh, we have to work on. I'm just, oh uh, yeah, it's so good to hear your story again from, you know, from where it was to where it is. And I know you help a lot of people within, you know, certain groups and people have emailed you and I know you do give your time and support. It's like you give back. It's almost like you pay it forward. You know, when you give it, you get to keep it. It's like you, you continually are talking about it with people. You're explaining it. You're having to go back and think, okay, what did I do that helped me? And you explain mm -hmm. it. So going back to your self-love, what's your self-love daily routine? What do you do? Yeah, um, I do at least 500 affirmations a day. Yeah. And I have to say it was a challenge for me. Yeah. Um, 
I used to do only like self-love meditations, but I wasn't really consistent with really doing affirmations to really change yeah. the wiring of my subconscious. Um, but I think since a few months, I really do 500 a day. And at yeah. first it was the scariest thing ever. Like I wasn't really, I was confused if I shall do it or not, because whenever I said things like I'm loved, um, it felt like horrible. Like I just felt like this is not the truth. Like yeah. why I'm saying this. And it felt like really, really bad in my gut because obviously um, I do have this strong wiring from my, from my childhood yeah. that I'm not loved. Like it, like only by women, like it's, I do yeah. feel loved by guys. I, I, I have no problem with connecting with them. Yeah. You know, friendship or romance wise. I have no problems opening up to guys and also my family, like, I do feel loved, but, yeah, it's still this kind of, it is so deeply wired in my subconscious. Yeah. Even though it's only one kind of part, like, it's only about women, it is still so deeply rooted. Yeah. It, is, yeah. it was a struggle, but I kept going because you taught me all over again that I have to stick to it. Mm. And it took some time, but now I really believe it. And it really changed my life because I really discovered that this feeling of I'm not loved was the root view because I always felt like the last years really depressed. Like I didn't even know I was feeling depressed because I only noticed since a few months, I feel really good almost daily. And I used to feel bad every single day. Like every single day was a struggle for me to kind of cope. Yeah. And it is really like, I think in one video you said that depression is really only repetitive habitual thought patterns mm. and I was a bit angry when you say that because yeah. I was like, no this can't be truth but then I really I really did this affirmation work and it changed my whole life really mm. like I have like I feel the majority of the time I feel really good and I really have days where I feel amazing even though I'm for example alone or whatever or nothing really special happens mm. and it's all because it really does work like I noticed even though I don't often say it with emotions still my my subconscious mind yep. it up. And when i say the affirmations it feels good because yeah. the brain starts after time like when you really do it like 500 times or more times a day it starts to kind of yep sink in even though you don't feel it like yeah. i didn't feel it a long time like it, it yep. the country, like it felt horrible saying those affirmations yeah but and still, I think, Kristen, too, when you're doing, because when you do 500 a day, it's like you can't say on every single affirmation, am I feeling that? I have to put, you just say them. And then eventually, like you say, the feeling just comes naturally because you're putting the mental effort into doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. So it's like the feeling catches up with you and it finds you. And then it just, you're doing the feeling you're doing the words and you're doing the feeling and it just happens because mm -hmm. people exactly. always say you got to feel it. You got to put the feeling in. But the thing is, if you're doing 500 affirmations, you can't monitor every single affirmation, whether you've got the feeling, but if you go walking or you put music in your ears while you're doing your affirmations, the music makes you feel good. Being outside walking makes you feel good or whatever, whenever you do your affirmations, so that feeling will naturally just go into what you're saying. Yeah. I, I think and if I can do it, then everyone can. Because for me, it was really a struggle. Like, yeah. like I said, at first I felt horrible. But the truth is I started, I, I did this for years and I just tried to ignore my subconscious limiting yeah. beliefs. And yeah. when they are so deeply wired, yeah. you can't, you, like, nothing, like nothing changes. It I, mean, of I did manifest things and I do manifest things, even though I may not feel every day wonderful, but it was really the cause of my depression. Like, yeah. and I didn't even know that until yeah. I noticed, wow, suddenly I feel really good. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and and when you think about it, depression is just, you're extremely good at negative thoughts. That's all it is. You're extreme. You've practiced them. You've practiced them with feeling and you've got really, really good at repetitive habitual thinking. So it's like, okay, if I can be really good at the negative, then I can be really good at the positive. But it is practice to is. feeling good is an effort. It is. It it's, is. It's an effort. Like you say, 
And, and I, I'm like you, I do about 500 to 1,000 a day. I'll go for a walk. I take my little counter. I do my walk. I do all my affirmations. I come back and I just go, woo, you know, because you, you've, you've been walking. I've been listening to music or whatever. And it just, that one hour of doing that, it just changes the whole rest of your day. It does. Yeah. And it's simple. And if you can't do an hour, you do two half an hours or you do two 15 minutes or whatever. It doesn't have to be, you know, when you start. But I find doing less than 500 a day, yes, you can still change things, but it will be slower. If you're doing kind of 500, yeah. it's, um, you know, it, it's just more concentrated and pinpointed. So. And it's fun. You actually start to really enjoy doing it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, at first it wasn't fun. <laughs> no, it's not in the beginning. No. I was scared because I felt like if, if this is good, what I'm doing, I was scared that I would feel even worse afterwards. Yeah. That, that's why I was so reluctant to really stick to it. But then I felt, okay, I really want to change this. And yeah. I want to be loved. And um, that's why I, I really stick to it. And I feel, feel I feel really really good because I think we often don't know that we like for example I didn't know that I was having this I'm unloved foundation because I don't yeah. like consciously I like I'm not thinking all day or I'm not loved but, but it's a state like it's really a state of being yeah when you feel this way when you feel drained all of the time when you feel bad all of the time for no yeah. apparent reason then it is like in my case it really was that I felt deep down for years that I'm not loved which is which is of course it's obvious because I it was really traumatic for me at that age and yeah. it like it would always come up for example um certain events triggered my feelings and I would suddenly feel the way I felt back then and I just noticed I have to do something because it won't go away yeah if I don't work on it and if I don't face it, because mm. it always comes up again and again. Yeah. Like, I can't really explain it, but I've changed obviously a lot and I'm positive and all that. But sometimes when I was like certain events or certain memories would suddenly trigger me and I would feel yeah. this kind of dark feelings I had as a kid. Yeah. But it gets really like less and less because I do a lot of power, power, pono pono and yeah really face my feelings like I'm not ignoring it yeah but I think too Kristen it's like when you're um when you're whether you're depressed when you're older or when you're younger or whatever and you're you look and you go okay when you look back you go my goodness I had no I just I just knew I felt really bad I didn't actually know that I was feeling really unloved it's like no. you don't sort of put those two things together till no. later like I look back at myself and I was really angry. I was um, in, like I was internally angry. I was um, negative. I was making negative comments all the time. It was like I hated life at that mm -hmm. age. But when I look back, I go, my God, I was feeling really unloved and really like, no matter what I do, I can never succeed. Like I, I just had this basic thing that I'm not good enough. I can't succeed. You know, I grew up poor. I grew up with, you know, I went to a public school. I didn't have, you know, a private school or any of that stuff. And I think, you know, I look back and I was just, it's like I had this anger at the world that, no matter what I did, nothing was ever going to work for me and feeling really unloved underneath that. And I think when I look back at that, I go, it was my lack of self-love and feeling unloved that created everything, everything, everything. And you go, whoa, if I could just go back and redo it, but you know, you learn when you learn and, and you, you know, you apply it. And then when you start it's like life gets easy. There's peace. You have a calm day. You can, you know, like last night I, I thought, oh, it's, it's nighttime. It's raining a little bit. And I thought, mm, I'm going to do an hour's yoga. I'm going to put the candles on. I'm going to do an hour's yoga. I've got a yoga lady that um, I watch on YouTube. 
Mm -hmm. Actually, I'll put the link down below for people that want to do yoga at home. But it's just really that creating peace as much as you can, whether it's yoga, meditation, affirmations, ho'oponopono, that you just lay down and you relax and you have an afternoon sleep or whatever it is that you go, how can I, what peaceful things can I do for myself today? And then other times you want to have energy and you want to do things and you want to go and enjoy the, the energy of going and doing stuff, whether it's exercise or playing basketball or whatever. But it's, it's finding that you have a lot less drama in life with people, mm -hmm with family, with money, with, it's just things are more calm. 100%. Yeah. And that's such a wonderful thing to have a calm life. That's what I also noticed. Like ever since I'm doing self-love work or meditation and generally learning about the law of attraction, I didn't attract like really negative things. Like I know a lot of people who get caught up in I don't know car accidents or something yep. really bad happens to them yeah I don't know they fail like really important exam or they lose their properties or like really heavy things happening or like yeah. even deaths or something and for me these kind of bad like really bad things just don't happen like I just don't experience mm -hmm. anything negative really I don't really attract yeah. really negative things at all yeah I mean, Because my base vibe is quite good. Like even though I have this, yeah. I don't feel good. I think it's never that low that I really attract bad yeah. things. Like it's really calm. Like I, mm. in my relationship, I don't have drama at all, which is really nice. Yeah. Which also happens when you are calm. Like you just yeah you don't do drama and you don't attract drama. Mm, that's true. And the relationship really is just you. It's as yeah. If you're peaceful, the relationship's peaceful. If you're angry, the relationship's full of arguments. If, you know, if you're feeling like you're unloved, you're going to attract the person moving away from you. So it's, it's yeah, that's for sure. yeah, it's a constant reflection of, of where you're at. So you're never fixing a relationship. You're always needing to correct and fix you. And I think that's why you mentioned the whole Pono Pono. That's a great way to dissolve the part of you that created that whatever that mess is or whatever's going on that's not good you go okay hang on what am I doing that that's here I need to look at me you know yeah and what so, really contributed yeah. to me feeling better and I didn't know that until I noticed the change I was like uh, talking to I think it was like two ladies when I was like attracting my person and I was talking to them and we were exchanging that They were like so toxic, like I didn't even realize it at that time. Like they were texting me like all day, but in a really negative way and just absorbing this kind of text all the time. Like they were yeah. really desperate and yeah. know, angry. And when I gave them advice, they would be angry at me. <clears throat> maybe she even said like negative things about my person. Like she literally said he's an asshole um, because it's like a mutual whatsapp group and yep. she was also texting with him and wanting advice and he was supposedly he was like mean to her or something and she was like he's such an asshole and she was like really aggressive and it really affected me negatively like at one point i was like i, I blocked her because i don't want anyone to interfere in my relationship yeah or kind of influence me like yep. she was said that he would be talking sexual to everyone in the group chat like she was telling me these kind of things and it wasn't helping me at all yeah I don't believe he did but yeah. it doesn't matter if he did or if he don't I just don't want to know this because yeah. it doesn't help me yeah and then there was another lady she was like extremely depressed and I mean it just dropped my whole vibe like yeah. ever since I like the other lady she uh, blocked me I think She also, she also told me that she doesn't want to influence me negatively. She so she blocked me uh, to protect me. Really. Okay. Oh, that's that was lovely. Really nice of her. Yes. And the other one, I blocked her because I just don't. I just 
didn't like this. Like, yeah. I don't want anyone to, to say that my person is an asshole. Yeah. I found it interesting because, again, this everyone is you push out applies so well because he supposedly was to her, like, really harsh. And I kind of, I don't know, like, kind of harsh. Yeah. And he's always very soft and very, uh, very caring. And he's really, mm. yeah, how shall I say? Like, he's really supportive. And yeah. to her, he was harsh. And I think it's really because she had this vibration. Like, she always <laughs> tried to get advice from others. Yeah. In a really demanding way. And just people don't want to give it when you're in this no. kind of vibe. That's true. That's true. Yeah. And you do see that a lot. You know, people are at different levels in law of attraction groups, WhatsApp groups. People are at all at different levels of suffering and different levels of understanding and different levels of applying. So, you know, you can only give so much. I mean, I find over the years I've kind of pulled out of a lot of groups because, well, mm. now because I'm working a lot more and I'm talking about this a lot during the day, but also when I'm not working, I want to be walking, going to enjoy a cup of tea somewhere, or I don't want to be doing that on my, on my days off or on my time off. So you do have to watch how much you give to people in groups. I mean, groups are very helpful and they, you can make some wonderful friendships, but yeah, once you start really applying it, you're in groups probably a lot less and you're doing it a lot more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not saying that it's like a bad idea to interact with others. It's just no. like paying attention to yeah. if it's like very negative. And I do the same. Like I was, I used to be like also like annoying people wanting advice, but now it's like I, I try to deal it myself because yeah. I don't want to drain other people's because yes. um, when you're coming, like when you always try to get advice from others who mm. also are on their journey, it does drain them because it when does. Yeah. negative stuff, it's like I really noticed ever since I these two girls like don't text me anymore, I just feel way better. And the relationship with my person also got better because yeah. it was, of course, like when she told me these kind of things, like he would uh, talk to others and uh, I don't know, kind of harass them sexually. And it, it confused me. I, I didn't believe her, but it, it's still like a source of negativity, which I just yeah. don't want. Yeah. When you focus on it, then you can attract it. Yep. And exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. Wow, that's so great. It's so great. And are you seeing your lovely man anytime soon? Yeah, on the seventh. Like it's actually next week on. Oh yeah, it's Thursday. first. It's the yeah. first today. Yeah. I'm yeah. I'm going to the UK, and it's really amazing because it's very simple for me to go there because. I'm a student. I, I'm really lucky. I don't have to work uh, in my free time a lot because my I'm very economic and my parents support me. Yeah. Like, I'm really lucky. I study what I love. I'm um I have a lot of free time and I can take the train for free too because I fly from Düsseldorf, which is uh, two hours away from me, but I can take the train for free because of my student ticket. Yeah. I can travel for free. And it's really easy. Like, I really Fantastic. love traveling. And it's only one hour flight from here to the UK. Yeah. Do you fly into London? And no, to Birmingham. To Birmingham, straight to Birmingham. Okay, mm -hmm. lovely. That's so good. Yeah, and it's really fun for me. Like, it's not, um, it is a challenge to not be able to see the person. But when you do this self-love work, I think it's actually a blessing for me because I think if I had someone here, I think it would be easier to drop back into this. Yeah. I just take love from outside. And now I can't do it because obviously I see him like every four, three to four weeks. And the other time I'm here alone and he's there yeah. as well. Yeah. I can't do anything. Like I have to deal with my own emotions. Yeah. The only thing that's really annoying is, um, of course, other people who aren't into law of attraction like I don't talk to anyone about this except like one friend of mine who also has a long distance relationship yep because people tell me especially like my my sister and I know she means well but yeah. it's not helping me like she would always tell me you know you have to make it clear he has to move here like this isn't going to work you know he's doing whatever there and 
it's annoying because obviously yeah. they don't know the mechanics of manifesting and yeah it's a bit annoying i must say that's why yeah. i don't yeah <laughs> of my circle yeah I not know. even my parents like my parents they also don't really know what this is because i can't tell them like they they freak out yeah yeah it's being selective as to what you tell people because you have to well we have to live our own lives and do the things that feel good for us and not everybody's going to agree and not every everybody's going to have their opinion so sometimes it's just best to do what you want to do and you tell people when you're ready how you want to tell them little bits of it yeah so and yeah. another challenge I had, because I didn't have it like with my ex and I had like real fear around this, is like not having daily contact. That was something I had to work on and manifest. And yeah. I did that. Yeah. Because I felt deep down, like I had this, I had this whole kind of thing about not feeling deserving. Yes. Um, and I had to work on that. And that's why I had like a really problematic relationship with my ex, because I felt really undeserving. <laughs> Yeah. And he didn't treat me well because I didn't feel deserving. And at that time, I didn't even realize that he yeah. was like, um, yeah, kind of a bit emotionally abusive, like in terms of he was not um, respecting like my interests and all these kind of things in a very subtle way. Yeah. But I, I didn't, I didn't really see that at that time because yeah. when you feel undeserving, you think that's how I, that's how it's supposed to be and even though I was yeah kind of unhappy all the time I didn't see that yeah and for example he wouldn't uh, like we didn't have daily contact like he would text me every five days or something like it wasn't really even though he was living near but I didn't like that yeah so I was really afraid that in my next relationship this will happen again that I'm not really having daily contact because that's something yeah. I just thought. I think that's quite natural. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, when, daily. Yeah. Mm. And what I did is I really did affirmations again. I said I'm deserving of daily text messages from my person. Yeah. And that happened really actually quickly. I, I don't know, it really happened in one or two weeks and this whole thing changed. Like wow. ever since then, I think it's like three, four months. Like we text every day. And it's not really a big deal. Like, yeah. yeah, it's just happening. Like we text every day. I like how you, I like your affirmation. I'm really deserving. What did you say? I'm really deserving. I, I, I'm deserving of daily text messages. Yeah. Me. Yeah. I think that's lovely. That's, um, that's changing you. Mm -hmm. And I also wanted to say that when I changed my whole vibe of self-love and my ex like who like treated me really poorly as I said and um, it was funny because after like I didn't stay in contact with him because I didn't want to yeah and after seven months like he suddenly contacted me I think it was in December last year he yeah. contacted me and said that he <laughs> like he was apologizing to me for what he did and all these kind of things and he he changed his behavior like completely like suddenly he was like really appreciating me and told me how much he appreciates me and my interests and all these kind of things and it's wow really, because I changed he also changed and it yeah. was really interesting because he said things like he wanted me back and stuff I didn't want that of course because I was with my new person yeah but he then texted me every single day and I was like I wanted that like when we were together and then suddenly it happened then like he would text me every single day he would just bombard me with messages and I think it's really again mm. self love and, and discovering your beliefs I think um I think it's it isn't that easy to discover your beliefs Ooh. because I, I meditate a lot and I do a lot of internal work and it's only when you meditate or really deal with your feelings that you uncover your beliefs yep. because I never knew that I felt undeserving. I never knew that I felt unloved. Yeah, it's true. Because Meditation make, makes you, you, you're quiet and your mm -hmm. eyes are closed and you cannot get away from yourself. So, yeah, I agree. Meditation is where you, you discover and reveal all the negative beliefs, all the feelings, everything, and you, it's time to let it out. Yeah. Yeah, because it is painful, but you have to deal with yourself like otherwise nothing's changing I mean not everyone has like 
deeply rooted problems as I had. I mean, there are many people who just had like a quite normal life where nothing really happened, but yeah. it's still really important because everyone, ha everyone has kind of limiting beliefs, especially because you don't get these things taught at all in society. Like everyone who isn't into this work thinks that it's normal to be in a relationship and leave it all up to the partner to make us happy and it's not working. Yeah. And then you wonder why, why is there so much drama? Yeah. And they're really like when I watch like TV series or things like they all have drama because they expect the partner to do everything. Yeah. They are just crazy. Yeah. They, they do drama and then they, then they don't understand why the other person doesn't like it. They just mm. they are entitled to do drama all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not working. No. Nobody wants it. No. And I or think some people say that it's like passionate when you fight a lot, but I don't think it's healthy. No, no. I mean, every now and again, maybe, but yeah, not all the time. And, you know, I think if you're in a relationship where you're expecting the other person to always contact you, always be the one that says, I love you, always is the one that's um, organizing everything. And I do hear a lot of that in emails. You know, I'm like, that as well. Yeah, this, I used to see that as well, and I always yeah. like they always told me, you know, you're not doing enough because it is it is a form of like of self love because I did that all of the time because I was afraid to do something because I was afraid of rejection yeah. and I wanted to feel important. That's why I was always very reserved. Yeah, I wanted the other person. I mean, yeah, it, especially when you're then committed, it doesn't work. It I doesn't mean, work. I do the same effort as he does. Like I yeah. text him as well. And that was also a challenge for me because yeah. I wasn't used to it. Yeah. But now I do it and it's really mutual. And the thing is also, um, when he, like that was my problem all the time. I was expecting to get a message all of the time. Yeah. When I was like, like, it's really crazy, but sometimes I would just break off the conversation when I felt needy. But then yeah. I expected him to text me again. Even yeah. though it's crazy because, of course, he, did, he didn't know what's going on, why I was just not responding yeah. in the middle of the conversation. Mm. And, and that's the thing, Kristen, when you're needy, you're always looking at the person, how much are they giving me? How, how did they contact me? When did they last text me? When did they last call me? It's all coming from this selfish place. It is selfish. And we and don't see that. We just, we don't see that we're selfish. But like you say, if you've got a fear of rejection and you've got a fear of what if I give something and then, you know, he doesn't reply or whatever, it's this fear, 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 fear. The person isn't getting anything good out of you. They're, they're giving a lot and they're not getting anything. Eventually they'll go away. Yeah, and I think there are different forms of being needy. Like I have never been an over-contactor at all. Like I've never done these things that, Yep. other people do but I was still the same kind of needy like I was just it was just a different form of being needy and the yeah. the effect is the same like I actually it doesn't matter if you do it externally or internally like they still go away like even yep. if you don't do anything like they feel that yeah that's true yeah that's true a lot of people don't over contact from fear but yeah people still feel the neediness and they still go away like you said there is. I'm glad you brought that up. Different forms of neediness. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you better just feel that. Like, I mean, neediness doesn't feel good. No. And it's like you either go one way, you're doing total over contacting and driving the mm -hmm. person crazy, or you're doing total under contacting because of fear, and then the person's not getting anything from you. So either way, you got to come into the middle and and learn to give to somebody a little bit, 50%, so that they are having a relationship too. That it's yeah, I think sometimes I feel that even in other people or in other guys, like, it's just a weird, like, even if they don't contact you, you can feel that. I mean, like, in my experience, it feels like you just don't want to spend time with them and you just don't want to reach out. Like, it's just the feeling of, I just don't want to be near them. Like, yeah. you can feel that subconsciously. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And you may not know why it is. Oh. Like, I had that a lot the last years, like with uh, guys I was friends with. And I was thinking, 
why do I, why, why don't I want to meet up with them? Because I felt something so weird going on and I canceled off in the last minute because I felt like I, I just feel so weird. Like I just don't mm. want to meet them. And it was, it was funny because they told me afterward that they, like they were angry and they felt like that I would cancel anyways. And that they just, they, they, they felt like they are not worthy of meeting me because this is also like a thing that I had. Mm. It's also a limiting belief again. Like I always felt like, that guys only pretend to be friends with me, but actually want to be with me like romantically yeah. and just try to get me into it with a friendship. Yeah. And that's what I always got as a result. Like it's really crazy. Like they would really try to go this other way around and think that after time I would just say, yes, let's be together. And that's what I attracted. And yeah. I always felt this underlying vibe of them that they are kind of, yeah. Desperate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and not really knowing what they are doing. Yeah. And it's nice, I think, to be on the receiving end of that because then it reminds you of what we do to mm. other people. When you're in your own neediness, you think, okay, whoo, someone's just done that yeah. to me. <laughs> now I now know why I have to do my self love because I don't want to do that to somebody else. So. Exactly. Ooh. And I also wanted to say, um, I see a lot of in, in groups on Facebook that a lot of women put the emphasis on living in the end things. Yes. Like for example, they focus only on convincing them that the other person loves them, which does have, which I think does have its place, yeah. but they just leave out self love. And then they wonder why are they not going any further? Yeah. Or why do they only attract like bits? Because that happened to me as well. When yeah. I was 18, I tried this with a guy from driving school. I didn't know about self-love and I only did visualizing and, I don't know, living in the end techniques. And um, the only thing I got was like bits. For example, I got a text message, then yeah. I was needy and then nothing happened. And then I was, in a moment when I was letting go, then I attracted maybe another text message, but it never got any further because the foundation is the most important thing. And that's what yeah. many women like because i only see women in the groups they, they don't want to understand it like they just yeah. want to do it that way but it doesn't work and then no it does not work and um, it's still coming from like living in the end i think is is such a great technique from neville but you got to look at what am i actually living in the end of if i'm living in the end of someone just giving to me you're still creating scenes that are all about you getting, you getting, you getting, you getting. What about the other person? There's another person there. They're not just there for you. They have their own lives, their own loves. They would probably like to receive something too. So I see a lot of people creating living in the end scenes where they just get, 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 get. And I think mm -hmm. that's still selfish. Yeah, for example, I mm. saw things like that women were affirming he's obsessed with me. Yes. You know what I mean? I think that's it, it's insane. Yeah. I'm sorry to say it, but... Yeah. Um, and if you want someone to be obsessed with you, you, you are basically saying, I'm going to get a huge amount of love from the outside so I don't have to love myself. Mm, that's it and it doesn't yeah. work like I've never no. seen it working I, no. and I'm glad it doesn't work I mean it if doesn't. that works then everyone could attract someone with bad intention and it doesn't work <laughs> yeah yeah you got to look at when you do your living in the end scenes is this actually a relationship where two people are receiving that we love each other in both directions the person receives from me not that I'm just trying to take love you know, mature relationships is love in both directions where you look after each other, where you give to each other, you know, and I hear a lot in emails. Oh, you know, I want, I want that person back. I love them so much. It's like, well, hang on a minute. You wanting them to do everything for you isn't love. It's no. actually, it's actually taking. So people say they love people so much, but there is a very, very fine line between loving someone so much and wanting someone to love you so much. It's different. Yeah. And I think when you try that out, like I think when I started, I also like tried it that way, but it, it like it didn't work. No. I think people 
like yes the law of attraction and uh, these kind of things like you can manifest anything you want and that's true but I think it's still a person like it's not an object and many yes. times the person as an object like it was yeah. like I don't know something um, material but I think it's not and yeah. in my experience it only worked with the approach that I'm really open-handed mm. and I want my person like honestly to feel good on his own and that's really yes. like it's lovely to me like I'm happy yeah. that he's um, on the same page and that he's like what now he's at work and he has his own things to do and he's happy on his own and it feels really good to be around him because he has yep. his own security and yeah otherwise like if we ha had someone who's obsessed like they would create drama or something and it wouldn't be um harmonious and yeah I, exactly. i'm just really happy that my person is secure and has his own self-love and security going on and that he's not yeah. like dependent on on me yeah because for me that's lovely yeah i agree i agree well wow a whole hour with you always goes so quick kristen so quick. <laughs> that's true yeah it's good have you got any last words you want to say to people anything yeah self-love is the most important thing and i think allowing like self-love yeah. and allowing yeah i agree and not trying to make it happen or force it to happen or manipulate it to happen you do your self-love you radiate it out you allow people to come when they're ready you relax, you enjoy your day, you do your affirmations, you do your meditations, you go out and enjoy nature, you enjoy music, movies, whatever you love, and make your day really good, you know? Exactly. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, I had a bit of a day off, and um, I went and saw that amazing movie called um, Green Book. Mm -hmm. And it, it was such a great movie. It was absolutely brilliant. I was in there. I went to the movies by myself. I love going to the movies by myself. I don't have to talk to anybody. I don't have to discuss the movie with anybody. And it was mm -hmm. just a wonderful day, you know. And I think having days where you just do what you want to do. You know, I went shopping and bought some things I wanted to get. And I went and had a really nice lunch at a cafe I've never been to yesterday. And I thought, ah, this is a day where I'm, I'm not looking at a computer for the day and, and just doing things that make me feel really good. And, you know, when you do that, it makes you a better partner to your person. It makes you, you're, you're charging your energy rather than going into being, I mean, I hear so much people saying, I'm exhausted, I'm exhausted, I'm exhausted. You cannot manifest if you are exhausted. You cannot. No. You have to have enough sleep. You have to do things you love. You have to eat healthy food. You have to drink water. That cause So many people are dehydrated. You have to try and build your energy reserves, not be using all your energy and going down to zero or in the minus. Do things that yeah, for sure. up your energy. Because so many people have no energy because they're giving to other people or they've got a job that they work too many hours or they don't do any meditation and recharge and they spend the whole night watching TV and you know, you've got to put energy in energy mm -hmm. in energy in and then that helps you love yourself and other people. That's in really exactly. important. So it so, is work though. Yeah. Like I meditate like when I was feeling really low last summer, I, like I meditated three hours every single day yeah and i think you have to like it's work you invest in yourself and yeah of course other people told me i'm missing out on life or whatever like i'm i don't like partying anyway so i didn't feel that way anyway but yeah. it was really investing in myself when i look back at how much i was growing in the last within the last year and what progress i've made yeah. it's really worth it like it it just makes you like it it really changes your whole life like mm. really like I manifested within a year when I was with, with this person. Like I'm, I'm not wanting to be judgmental, but the ex that I had, like he wasn't fitting to me and his lifestyle, like it wasn't something yeah. that would make me feel good or would help me grow. And by doing all the meditation and all these things, I man manifested my, my partner who really fits to me and enables me also to travel to the UK because I've always wanted to be in the UK. I study English. I love it there. Yeah, it really makes me happy and I'm really grateful that yeah. I invested so much in myself because otherwise I have no idea what would have happened to me if I never discovered this. Like I think yeah. it would be I a know. disaster. 
Yeah, I know. I mean, you think we're so lucky to have YouTube to be able to mm -hmm. learn. You learn stuff for free. It's so good. I actually write it every single day on my great gr gratitude list because I think YouTube to me is really important. I'm yeah. every day on YouTube and watch like Love Attraction Inspirational yep. YouTubes and I'm so grateful for yeah. this medium. Me too. Me too, Kristen. Me too. And, and it's only been around 10 years this year, YouTube, 10 mm -hmm. years old. Well, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for giving your time. It's been wonderful to talk to you. I will put your contact details like we did with the other interviews down below for anyone that wants to contact you. And thank you very much. Welcome. It was and fun. Yeah, it's always fun. It's always fun. So, we're going to say goodbye and goodbye. <laughs> bye everybody. We'll see you in the next YouTube 